previously on Honest Outlaw. Oh. Not well, it doesn't like the fiocchi at all. Oh, okay. Weird. Well, hopefully it's like a break-in thing, I don't know. What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing a second shots on the 22 Magnum from Smith & Wesson. Uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Magnum is one of the more popular pistols from the year. It actually has a very interesting system in it, very similar to the 5.7. The tempo barrel system, it helps reduce recoil, it kind of runs like a gas system, and it uses the 22 Magnum cartridge. Now, the appeal of this gun is that you get a very light recoiling firearm with a high capacity, which we will go over in a minute. You get it for relatively cheap, it has relatively low recoil, good power, and it's fairly capable. The downside of it is when we did the first shots of this gun, as many of you saw, uh, we had some reliability issues. Ready? What a rip. And not only did we have some reliability issues, but some people on YouTube did and some people didn't. So we checked your comments out and we decided to take those in consideration and we also wanted to test a bunch of different types of ammo in a bunch of different ways. So the first comment we saw about the reliability was that we were using an optic in the first shots. A lot of people thought the extra weight would create some of the reliability issues. Now that's possible. However, that optic that was on the gun was actually also on the gun in the Smith & Wesson videos. So obviously the gun is meant to use that optic. The uh, EPS carry uses the same footprint as the 507K, which is a uh, cut that the gun direct mounts to. So it was meant to have the optic, it was cut for an optic. However, we're gonna try it without anyway, just in case the weight was an issue. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be using several different types of ammo. Now we use uh, Maxi Mag in the first shots, however, now we're gonna be using them again because they were the most reliable type of ammunition. So we have both of those. They are on the recommended sheet that we picked up from Smith & Wesson's website with all the recommended ammunitions on it. We actually have a couple more as well, including Hornady 30 grain VMAX. Now the 45 is on there, but the 30 grain should run just fine. And then we also have a Winchester 22 Magnum, which I don't love Winchester ammunition. Generally, they're underpowered. However, and it's not on the recommended uh, list, so take it or leave that. But I wanted to try it just to try something new. Now, after the first shots, not only did we take off the optic, but we actually took the gun apart, completely cleaned it out, re-lubed it, and when we did, we actually found out there was a lot of gold shavings in there, and that is brass shavings from the cartridges. See those brass shavings? There's literally brass shavings in the trigger group, in the back of the trigger group, all over the slide, and just covered in the chamber here. I'll take it out. You can see, look at all the brass shavings in there. And now I believe that's taking place, I think it's getting shaved off on the actual chamber itself here, which is relatively unique. I've never really seen that much debris inside a firearm before. Uh, I think some of that is due to the length of the 22 Magnum cartridge. All right, so this is the 22 long rifle right here. This guy's the 22 Magnum. The longest of the four is the 5.7, the FN 5.7 ammo right here. And this is just a blazer brass 9mm 115 grain. This is the shortest but the fattest, and you can see kind of the disparity in length and size. The 22 Magnum was not initially designed for semi automatic pistols, and I was a little worried about the rim and the length and all that type of thing because if you look at the CMR 30 by Keltec or any of the other 22 Magnum pistols, they do have 22 Magnum pistol, 22 Magnum cartridge issues. And today I wanted to find out if this is just going to be another one of those, or if we use a bunch of different types of ammo and clean it up and change the optic, maybe we'll have different reliability. Now we did clean it with Break Free and we did lube it with Slip 2000. The magazines could be the issue also. Uh, these are not the same, although it's the same system. System as the M&P 57, it's not even close to the same magazine design. These are all polymer, very similar to the cheap Rimfire uh, 22 mags that you have a tendency to find in other guns. A lot of Walther clones and stuff like that have that. So I'll be interested to tr to see if not only the the polymer mag design. But if this is the issue, this turning from double feed into the uh, into the chamber, not only kind of inverting like that, but also then going way up because the chamber is not in line with the magazine. So you have to go up and kind of to the side and that paired with a very long cartridge, I wonder if it's just getting stuck up in there. We'll go and shoot more rounds here today and see how that goes. Before we do that, I do want to mention my page supporters. Thank you guys very much. Uh, you guys bought the ammo, so we thank you very much for that. My wife actually went out today and picked up a bunch of different types. So 
If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. Please go to the description of this video and all of my videos and donate to those kids. And then finally, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, the Sonoran Desert Institute. We really like them as a sponsor. They're a sponsor we really believe in. I believe in education, I believe in firearms, and this is a good way to mix the two. If you want a career in firearms, if you want a career in gunsmithing, drone usage, firearms technology, literally anything that has to do with firearms at all, you can find that at the Sonoran Desert Institute. That way, if somebody like me has a problem with a gun like this, you can help me fix it. They're spraying poop right over there. Oh, that's what they're doing? Big poop sprayer. Oh man, Iowa problems. All right, so we're gonna try it at uh, 75 here, and we'll just see if we get any better results. So good. That was a whole mag. Yeah. The other thing that could have been the issue is just the break-in process. You know, could have been. We got 300 in the first video. Probably put two or 300 more in this one, and maybe it'll just wear in. And those parts that were rubbing enough to stop the slide, maybe they'll slick up. That's generally what happens. Do you That's have any burrs hook. or anything in there? That's why triggers get smooth. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to hit that one. I can't hit that guy from here. See that one that's like facing the other direction? Because you only yep. have half a target? Yep. Got it though. Wow. Well, that for sure helped. All right, so the first ammunition that we shot here was total metal jacket maxi mag 40 grain and that is on the recommended magazine or the ammunition list and this one is the first ammunition we've had now this we had last time too when we had the optic on it didn't run and pre 300 rounds break in as well it didn't run now it is we shot 50 rounds through it with no failures so far next up we're going to try the maxi mag 22 hollow points again uh they were they were the second most reliable ammunition last time we're gonna run 50 rounds through this and see if that works. All right, so now we're back at 100 yards and we have the uh, CCI hollow points in here, the 40 grain maxi mag, and we'll see if they work well. And if they work well with me, then we'll have my wife try and shoot them. These definitely have more recoil. Where did that even go? How many can I hit in a row at 100 yards, right? Yeah, that was amazing. But now, also, I did see One of them did it. struggle. Yeah, I saw that. I felt it. I felt it slide back and go forward. Now, that's the malfunctions that we were having. We weren't having failures to throw the rounds out. We were having failures to, uh, failures to feed. And I can see already, now that we cleaned it out, you can see again, there's a whole bunch of brass shavings in there. I see, I just pulled a few hold on, out. Hold on, hold on, I can't see. I don't know if I can pick, oh, there we go. It's scraping off pieces of the case. Little target I was pecking there. So yeah, 
100% reliable, 100 rounds in a row. Sounds good. Maybe it was the optic. Maybe it needed just cleaned after a couple hundred rounds. Either way, both of those ammo struggled last time. They didn't struggle this time. So it's either the optic, the break-in period, this is one of the two. I must be limperist in it. Yeah. Okay. Strong wrist. There you go. Did it. All you have to do is think strong thoughts. See? Should have thought strong thoughts. I'm trying to think strong thoughts. All right. No. No. What? All right. So let's uh, choke our grip up high like that. Get that big squeeze. Squeeze in torque shoulders into it like that okay. torque our hands forward like squeeze like this kind of motion and let's okay. give it a shot oh look at that i am not thinking strong thoughts magic trick all right everybody this is stephanie our new channel assistant this is her first time shooting on the channel a handgun yeah so we're gonna load the the round with your thumb that we're gonna find our reference point with our left hand we're gonna squeeze we're gonna bring the uh, gun to the target slowly pull to the rear Woo! There we go. nice hit okay. you can keep going yeah you can keep going now whenever you're done you can hand it to me Nice. Nice job. Well done. Okay. All right, we changed ammos. We did. So now we shot 215 already, and now we're trying the Hornady uh, ballistic tip out, and we'll see if that works. Okay. Looks like it. That is not, though. Oh, that's the uh, Maxi Mag. Look at that group I put on that thing. That was amazing. <laughs> but also I feel like an idiot because I'm the only one that had malfunction so far. You gotta step up your game. My poor little hands can't handle it, I guess. The girth of it. All right, since I was having problems apparently yeah. with this. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna torque our left hand a little bit more. You wanna engage the forearm just a little bit more. You wanna find your thumb with a reference point here. There we go. You wanna squeeze this pinky right here and this palm here together like that give okay. more pressure yep bend our bend our hips forward put our body into it a little bit okay mr guns and geared a little bit okay. and then we'll pull the trigger all right Woo, no malfunction Want to try something small here. All right, remember, let's seize our body. There you go. Nice. Woo! Well done. So we've had much better reliability so far today. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna shoot a couple hundred more rounds, but we are about 300, 350 in already. And we've had no malfunctions that were caused by the gun or the ammunition, just kind of a limp wrist and ordeal that we've managed to fix. So a lot more reliable than we did the last time. And so far we've had the most reliability with actually this uh, 22 mag 30 grain VMAX. 
This stuff has run unbelievably great. You can feel the authority when this comes out too. It's got a little bit more recoil than the other stuff and it doesn't have any of the slugging forward issues that the CCI did. So, so far I would say that if you get one of these guns, I am going to recommend this ammo so far. Just because we've had a lot of good reliability with this. Not only that, but this is a hunting self-defense round anyway. So, uh, pretty good way to go. All right, so. Squeeze your hand in like that. Here, I'll take the mag and you okay, can get your grip you. ready. And then got your hand set and then we're gonna take that thumb get it out of the way we're gonna yep. put our left hand in we're gonna take our thumb and put it on this reference point yep, yep. you feel good with that yes okay take our left hand back off we'll insert the mag yep we're gonna I'm gonna drop the slide for you okay. and they're gonna find that reference point with your thumb again we're gonna aim on target once you get it on the target we'll put our trigger finger in the trigger guard on the trigger on the trigger pad okay. pull it slowly to the rear while maintaining your sight picture Nice shot. Yep, might help to get a little more aggressive, bend a little further forward like you're leaning into something. Okay. Losing your left thumb a little bit mm -hmm. there. Now, we'll take our finger out of the trigger guard and we'll re-grip okay. like that. And then we'll thumb us down. Yep, okay. there you go. You're okay. amazing. That's so fun. <laughs> right now you're trying to get fancy. Malfunction? Yeah. Limp person. Ooh, the outlaw limp person. You gotta put a lot of pressure on it for it to work. That's why I wanted to see left-handed, you know? Because with your left hand, you're just never gonna get enough wrist in it. Yeah, so, so far we've shot, you know, 300, 400 rounds today. I think almost 400 already. And we've had no problems. So that means to me that it was not a cleaning issue. That means to me that it must have been a break-in or a weight of the optic issue, which is kind of crazy. I wouldn't have guessed that. But maybe with this smaller slide and this smaller uh, reciprocating mass, maybe it did change it enough. Now. I prefaced that it ran really well up till now because we're gonna be using 40 grain Winchester and I traditionally don't like Winchester ammunition because it tends to be underpowered. And that is sort of the issue we've been running into. The highest powered ammo did run this the best. So I'm gonna use this because it's cheap and because a lot of people are gonna to try to use it. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not gonna blame the gun if it doesn't work because it's not on the recommended ammo list. But if it does work, that means you can buy cheap ammo. Or at least I can. Well, we had a dead round already. Let's see if it works on its side. Oh boy. That one also had erratic ejection patterns. Did it? Yep. Going like this way and that way? Yep, and then also the slide was moving at various speeds as well. Yeah, that's, that's good old Winchester for you. So we had a lot better experience this time, did we not? We did. I mean, you shot, a did you shoot 200, 150? What did you shoot out of this? Me? Yeah. Oh, not nearly. Mags and mags and mags. I mean, I know I we shot I 400 at least today, 400 or 450 today. 
the Winchester didn't work, but it worked about as well as cheap 22 ammo always does. You know, if you buy Win like Remington Golden Bullet or Winchester White Box, you know what you're buying. You're buying an ammo that works most of the time and sometimes it doesn't. That's why we buy that for training ammo and that's why we don't use that for self-defense. So if you wanna go cheap on the 22 Magnum ammo, you can use that and then I probably would recommend if you're gonna, you know, self-defense it up or hunting it up, I would really recommend going, I usually recommend CCI, yep. But in the case of this, after we have 750 rounds for this now, yep. the Hornady 22 Magnum 30 grain VMAX by far worked the best in my gun. The ballistic tip, I like that ammo to begin with. Uh, however, I wasn't sure how it was going to perform in this because CCI is generally the 22 ammo for me. Uh, but yeah, if, as I shoot this, this is what I'm going to be buying from now on. Um, we'll be doing a full review of this, obviously, and we're probably going to put probably more than a thousand rounds now since we're at 750. Probably go 2,000 just to make just fucking fun. sure. And it's fun. It's a great gun to shoot. That was what disappointed me so much about the initial first shots is that the gun is I mean, it's not reliable, which is a problem, but it was super accurate, super low recoil, unbelievably accurate. I couldn't stress that enough. The trigger's great. The recoil impulse is great. The tempo barrel system kicks the recoil off even more than a standard 22 mag. Mm. I like my Walter 22 Magnum a lot. However, it does have more recoil than this does, and this does have better ergonomics. Uh, it has a uh, better trigger than most of the M&Bs, which is really great. That's what I said about the 5.7 as well, is they've got this flat face trigger that works great. The sights are awesome. It has an included optics mount to it, but I don't know if I'd recommend putting an optic on it. The ammunition you had a problem with was the uh, hollow point, and Ooh. the ammunition that I had a problem with was the Winchester. So we're just gonna have to go back and forth. I'm gonna probably put the optic back on, and then mm -hmm. we'll probably shoot another one of these with Hornady. And then we'll probably do some durability tests on the optic mounting system. Maybe do some drop tests on it. See if it holds. Ooh. Maybe if we get, like I wanted to do a durability test thrown in the lake and all that stuff. The problem is you can't really do that unless you have a base 100% reliable already. That's true. Because if you have failures already, what's the point in getting it dirty? So maybe after the thousand round review. Yeah. Maybe we'll fuck done. it up. The difference between this and a 5.7 is a 22 Magnum. It's fucking cheap. $15 for a box of 50 instead of $50 for a box of 50. So it's a big difference. And you know, the 5.7 is more reliable. And I expected it to be, honestly, because 5.7 pistols are more reliable than 22 Magnum pistols. That's the other thing about the 22 Magnum. Everybody was super upset that it didn't work. But like, I had, I had apprehension to begin with because 22 Magnum semi-automatic pistols have never worked the best in my opinion. So I'm excited that it's working now. I'm excited that we have it for sure broken in. 750 rounds, a good break-in period. And uh, we'll go from there and we'll keep her testing. And you guys let me know in the comment section what you want to see next. I like shooting this gun. I like beating up guns. So let me know what you think. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We sell by our local homeless shelters. And remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Previously on Honest Outlaw. You say it. Well, I'm not going to say that first. Say it! No. Previously on Honest Outlaw. <laughs>